Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to um, the brand new podcast. I'm joined here by Costa Diamantopoulos and Jimmy Sufis here. Uh, really excited to get this up and going. Who knows what's going to happen? We've brought this up just because of pure boredom. Uh, we're at home. There's no serious futsal. We miss it, don't we, boys? Well, we got. We don't really have much to to do right now, so we need we need to start talking. We need to start putting out some content for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Really. Um, we're going to start off today. Um, to review the men's. The first couple rounds of the men's. Um, it's been a hard. Uh, sorry, a strong start to the season by. Um, probably Fitzroy and Carlton, but on the flip side, we've had um, Ashburton and Altona um, not perform as well. Um, Jimmy, I'll flip over to you because um, you've played Altona uh, and Ashburton. We'll start with Altona. We'll review both their games to start with um, early on. How do you see the start to the season? Look, personally, I think Altona was uh, a tough opponent in the opening game. Uh, they recruited well. They had a full side and um, they really pushed us. I think it was only 4-2 in the end, so um, we had to really really fight for that win. And then, unfortunately, due to the whole uh, epidemic going on at the moment, they were undermanned in the second game and, uh, and copped, a, copped slaughtered, it pretty heavily really, by, yeah. by Camberfield. So I don't think they're as bad as that game shows. Uh, I think after the break, they'll, they'll come good and they'll really test a, a lot of teams. It's um, in- interesting, though, because you never really... See, even with a poor side, you never see Frano cop 13 goals. So yeah, they must I, have been hit bad. He he didn't have a great day either, Freno, so um, it happens. But he didn't have uh, a lot of protection either, so he, he, I think he, a lot of the goals were walked in. He struggled, yeah. Well, he was he was facing an Enrique Pimenta that was just like on form, on fire. Six goals he finished with. I mean, what what's he going to do really when his defense is letting Enrique just yeah, walk through him? Yeah, that's right. And Enrique was on fire, but um, still on Altona Costa. Um, talk to us through some of their signings. They've, they they hit the um, transfer period pretty hard in the off size off season. Well, I know they got Ruben Langerak, who um who looked good in the first game, but that that first game they all looked with good with a fresh haircut they, they too, mind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, he got rid of the, those famous dreadlocks. Um, but they look uh, they look good with their new signings. Who else have they got? Um, uh, Kara, no, not Kara. Um, Omar Turkman, Omar Turkman is um is Hader Hader Hassan, Hader Hassan and is Hader there. Hassan and Giovanni yeah. Garcia, was Giovanni it? Garcia, yeah, yeah man. So. Yep, yep. I think I, I thought they'd recruited well. I thought um they picked up some genuine futsal players, some youth players, um, maybe youth without a lot of experience. Um, and that's where I think, Jimmy, you pointed earlier on about them maybe having a youth team to maybe give them a bit of extra game time as well. Yeah, well, I think it'd be great to see them have a youth team. Uh, they have a lot of young players already, and you can obviously have the overage goalkeeper and player, so mm-hmm. maybe some time for Marcus Batiri, the second keeper, who doesn't get uh, much of a look with Frano in front mm-hmm. of him. Yep. Uh, a chance to experiment with other players and, and you know even more youth players. So yeah. I think... It's a good move from Altona if they can uh, get it done because they already have the base to to actually uh, make that happen. So I think it'll really... It's already shown that the title-winning teams do have youth teams in the last few seasons. You know, yeah. more than last season, pretty much playing two games a week. And uh, yeah. and you can already see they started a little bit slower this season without that. So yep, yep. it just gives you a chance to, to strengthen as a team and uh, iron out any mistakes before um, before the main game. So. Yeah, yeah for I think sure. it's good good for Altona if they can uh, get that going. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And um, and mind you, the youth leagues aren't easy either because you still have to come up against like Scott Rogan, Zach plays, Tom Natalie, all those sorts of guys. Uh, you'll see, you'll see a lot of the senior same opponents. youth players. Yeah, yeah, senior youth players, and it's it's good for um, the the kids to have the opportunity to play against senior bodies. Uh, moving on, we'll go move on to um, the Green Machine Ashburton, newly promoted. Um, not a very convincing start, although they're not last in the ladder. Well, um, they did do good against Morley in the first round. Yeah, yeah, to be fair, they were competitive, yeah. Um, I, I agree. Who do you think uh, needs to step up for them um, to be able to be competitive, Costa? Uh, I couldn't I couldn't tell you. I'll, I know their new signing. Um, is it is it El Turkmani? Is that his name? El Turkmani, Mohamed yeah. El Turkmani. I've, yeah. I've, I've seen good things from him. I expected him to uh, hit the ground running. He has actually done been one of their better performing players but um there's there's just there's no one yeah there's no one really who stood out um for me that that I expected to yeah. like their players from last season in the championship it's just it's like they've they expected it's like they already know that it's going to be too hard for them really yeah which is which is a shame because they did have some quality players um last season but 
that's what it is. If you're not a futsal team, you get absolutely punished. And um, they did come up against a futsal team in Fitzroy in that second round. And it was as a 12-1 schlacking, Jimmy Sufus. Um, you guys just put it all right that game. But um, what do you think of um, Ashburton as, as they started in that game? Uh, I just think they weren't... They didn't put enough pressure on us, um, to be honest. I think uh, we were just allowed to do whatever we really, really we wanted. And I think that'll come with time and experience for Ashburton. But they just needed to... Yeah, put more pressure on on the ball. Like we'd receive the ball with time and space, and um, a lot of options. We could work the ball around, and um, when they lost the ball, they didn't drop quick enough to to stop us scoring goals. So, uh, you know, we got yeah. a young, quick team, and uh, yeah, it really we just punished them in the end. But I think that's something they got to just get better at is putting pressure on the ball and yeah. not making it easy for the opposition. Because uh, yeah, we had too much time to really do whatever we wanted uh, in the game. So yeah, yeah. I think that's that just was the main difference really. And yeah. when they had the ball. We always had pressure on them, and we were getting back straight away as soon as we'd lose it, and they didn't really have time to play either. So yeah, um, that was my view on, on that game. I'm just going to run through some of the names um, Ashburton had last season and didn't have in the second game against Fitzroy. You look at names like Alistair Dunlop, who ex-Fitzroy player, and Fusca, ex-Fitzroy player, uh, George Michele, ex-Carlton um, player, won a championship as well. Um, who am I missing? Sergio Ruiz is injured. Sergio He's Ruiz been there, but yeah, that's right. He was top quality. Um, and um, um, the rat, what's his name? Uh, Fraser McKinley. Fraser McKinley. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if he played in that second game against you. No, he didn't. No, I don't think so. No, they're all quality players, but it looks as though that's going to be the story for them this season, which is, you just say tough luck. Like I said, you're not a futsal team. You're going to get smashed off the park, essentially. Um, moving on. This is an interesting one. The revitalized, sort of revitalized uh, Wolves. You want to say revitalized because they do look good, don't they, boys? But they just haven't, they've had a tough start really in their fixture, to be honest. I think at the same time, so has uh, Ashburton. Yeah, you know, definitely. So Ashburton played Moreland, Fitzroy. Yeah. Yep. And Wolves played Pascoval and Moreland. So yeah. Really, it's not an easy start. You can't judge too much on that. To, Like I said in the commentary a few weeks ago, to stay safe, I don't think the Wolves... And Ashburton and Altona need to beat the teams at the mm. top. They need to beat each other and yep. um, the middle ranked teams. So it's a good start. They've shown positive signs. The Wolves. So they, I think, they have. You know. they, they, they weren't. They weren't terrible opening games as well. They really pushed Pasco. They really pushed um, Moreland. It was that. There's nothing to really dwell on from those games. They and it doesn't get easier. They've got us in the next round when we return as well. The mm. heart and the way we're in bit of form. I have yeah. to blow my own horn a little bit. But yeah, that that's true. It's a, it's not getting any easier for them. They but need a they'll need to do some some more damage in in one of these games coming up if they want to you know stop us from talking about a, a poor start to the season. Yeah, really, for sure. Which has always been the story of the Wolves. Actually, um, they've always had poor starts. I think last season was the first time they had a good start, and they had a poor finish after. I think they. They got decimated in the transfer period. Um, mm -hmm. But they, they would talk about this transfer period. Costa, big signings they had. Yeah, Western Wolves, they got um, they got the their Breno Pilates. They got their... Um, Alison Lima. Alison Limas. They, they, they added... They got Mauricio. They got their Brazilian flair coming in. Um, but it looks like... It looks like we, we did expect them to know how to play together. They, they have all played together at some point, I, I believe. So they should... They, there's, they're not a bunch of new players being put into a, a squad that they've never seen before. So you can see there's chemistry there with these new signings. Maybe it, it does take a few more weeks to, to really gel with this, this whole new system, this whole new club. But um, yeah, they are quality signings and they, they, do, they do show signs of good chemistry. Yeah, um, and uh, look, um, I think the only thing missing is actually depth. Um, yep. and, um, all the names you said uh, Alison, Mauricio, Breno and they got um, they got Carla in goals who needs a bit of experience but he's not a bad keeper either so he, he did good he, yeah. did, he did good in the first half uh, against Moreland. Um so I think it's just and Rodrigo's pretty good I think once they start dipping into that, the bench players it sort of sort of drops for them and that's where um, probably the boys were starting to feel a bit under the pump you know not um, I think against Pascal Vale and against Moreland they didn't do many subs towards the end and um, that's what happened they just got ran over in the end yep um, Pascal Vale sitting fifth on ladder one win one loss um, 
lost to Carlton and they beat, I think, uh, was the Wolves, obviously, in the yep, first Wolves, round. Yeah. It's a 50-50 it's a start, obviously. It's only two games, small pool to look, take from. But what are, you, what are your thoughts on their start so far, fellas? Uh, look, Pasco, I think he's uh, got a gel a little bit. They've got um, a new group, a few new signings. You know, Fabio Albuquerque's come in. Uh, Hamish Gray, 17-year-old. Uh, who else they got? Leo Kimpara. Um, you know, players that really haven't uh, played the Pascal system before. Yeah. Uh, so they need to need to adjust. Losing Joao de Silva and Alison Lima. Big losses. Is, is yeah. massive. Um, uh, and Aaron Yu as well. Obviously, they had Reza uh, Bebanyani. I think that's the going the to season, tell the so most, actually, if yeah. they're not dominating. I think there were games where they were, um, weren't were really dominating last season and they got away with it because Aaron Yu just had an unbelievable season. He's back to his um, former self. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's it. I think Pasco uh, would would dealt a, a harsh lesson against Carlton, uh, and some weaknesses were exposed. So they just need to to really gel more as a team, and I'm sure they'll take this off off season to all this break to uh, adjust and 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 fix any issues they have. Maybe look for a goalkeeper as they've got time to to mm-hmm. look for one now. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. They've got three goalkeepers there, but I don't think they really know who's going to be a number one out of Eric Jarvis and Dianush. So. I think that that's that's one of the main issues. Pascoval has always been built on a strong goalkeeper to to back them up, and uh, you see that through most of their titles. They had Lorenzo de Paris, Felipe Blay, uh, Dionysio Souza Day in his prime, you know. So mm. they've always had a, a solid figure. Aaron New last he's season. He's not the same Dionysio. He he's moment. not. He spent time away, and um, he could be, but yeah. he just needs needs time. And in this league, you don't really have time. If you you drop games early, it's uh, almost good night for you. And uh, Costa, Jimmy's already mentioned, but um, Fabio Al- Albuquerque is the uh, new signing to... Yep. And Leo Campara. And Leo Campara, yeah. yeah. Ha- have you seen them uh, gel so far? Um, before the season started in the... Um, was it the Foz Cup? They they both looked good. Fabio still looks good. Still still looks like he's going to be their main goal scorer for the team, playing up front. Um, Leo, uh, I believe, has struggled a little bit more. Um, he's he's dropped off a tiny bit from those uh, games before the in preseason before the season started, but um yeah it's just with Pascal Vale they're they're a team with a real system, a real Pascal Vale way they love to train, so I think they just need I think it's a real wake up call what your Carlton site did to them really to to start gelling, um to start gelling as a team with all their new, with these new signings because they got depth they got yeah. the players they just need to start playing the Pascaval way. Let's not forget Joel was uh, best and fairest last season. Yep. Um, so to lose a best and fairest is never easy. As mm-hmm. well as Allison, I think probably one of the most underrated targets. I think people just don't like him, but <laughs> um, which is true. But he's very effective on the pitch and people tra- tend to underestimate his talent due to their personal reasons. Um, and I think they should discount that. And they're two big losses to have. Um, as along with Aaron New, so they've been decimated pretty hard. I think as well they're probably breathing a sigh of relief. There's a international ban on flying at the moment because Alejandro means he means he stay, stays around for a little he's bit longer. Here, yep. Yeah, he's stuck here. Alejandro was due to go fly back to Spain um, early, late March, early April, I believe. Guys, is that right? Um, early or possibly May. May. Yeah, it would have yeah, been later. Yeah, closer uh, to May. Yeah, so you know that would have been another big loss. And Kevin, I think, is battling an injury but still playing on. On and off the court, yeah, you'll yeah. see Kevin. Uh, moving on, we move in fourth place, Camberfield. Um, they got the one win, uh, so lost to Carlton round one, and um, as we said earlier on, absolutely uh, demolished Altona Knights. Yep. Um, how do we see Camberfield this season? The, the, the obviously, uh, Costa, you tell us about Billy Attic as probably their biggest signing. Oh yeah, Billy Attic. That was massive. That was it was a shock to everyone. I didn't. I had no. I had no yeah, idea it was coming. No there was no. There was no rumor about it. No. There was, it was just the done deal that I that I provided. But um, man, that Campbellfield side, uh, with a with a strong squad, we saw what they did to Altona. Um, although Altona were struggling, they were struggling for players. A thirteen-one score against Frano Saric. That's pretty convincing. Mm-hmm. Um, but we saw them without Enrique. Against um, and I think Coloured Ayash missed the first game maybe yep. and Danny Shabani yeah that and Danny Shabani so, so it's very hard to judge them on yeah. that first game against us yeah so they were faced against obviously a very strong Carlton side who were who were running very well but they were mi- yeah they were missing their their key players they came in and they were very very convincing against Altona yeah and um, uh, Jimmy do you, do you think they they have a chance to push that top three four position this season? They, they weren't far off last personally, season. Yeah, personally, I think uh, Camberfield could be right up there come season's end. You know, they still have 
Hayden Kanjo to return as well. They've now got mm-hmm. um, an elite goalkeeper, which they missed in previous seasons. Uh, look, for me personally, I think Camberfield is a very tough side to play. Uh, I know other people will disagree with me, but uh, I, f- I see them right up the top with Enrique at th- uh, playing this like this. He just needs to play a full season this yeah, way. Yeah, I think not, I think for mine, not half a season. To avoid suspensions, yeah, really. avoid the suspensions. You get injured, you get injured. Yeah. But yeah. I think him, Breno, Carlard, um, they're pretty well known to. Um, for their red cards, for their yeah. antics. Well, what so you, Enrique got what nine yellow cards and a red or two reds. Even last even, season? even yeah. Billy, they they signed Billy, but they, that's yeah. another. They're and not Hayden. they're not injury Hayden prone. The same. Yeah. I think nine yellows. He's as well. banned from the social leagues yeah. right now, so yeah. Billy Attic. They're, uh, they're not injury prone, but they're suspension prone. Really, um, these players. Yeah, but in saying that, they are big names, big talent oh, players. So yep. Camberfield, I'm very excited for what they can bring. Sofiane and Q got to try and bring that together. Sof, yeah. obviously, we know Sof's the impact back he has. On the court too, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about that one. Oh, look, obviously, I worry. We all worry. We know about his um, past history, but um, you know, if he feels comfortable and he's he plays well when he's on fire, he plays well. Yeah. Sometimes mm-hmm. maybe I think he needs to sub himself <laughs> off a little bit more. <laughs> he won't, he um, won't listen to. Q. I don't blame him. Round one, round one, they didn't have much else, much else options. You, you'll, you'll spot him and Q arguing from the court to yeah. the bench when Q's trying to drag him or settle him <laughs> down, and Soft just wants to. It's, it's trying to talk, talk to him. You know, talk, what, what, what am I doing wrong? Well, yeah. in the middle of the game, but um, um yeah, that. That's that's really it with for the Cambo side. They got their new signings, but they it's just time to they, it's just them it's the mentality that really always gets them. It's the suspensions, it's the mentality. If they stay if they have the, the championship mentality, maybe they'll push for the top three. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And um uh, we'll move into the top three. Um, it's a good transition there. Um, three teams undefeated, uh, from two from two. Um uh, Moreland now sitting in third place. Um they've um, who have they beaten? Sorry, you guys would know. Um, they've beaten the Wolves and Ashburton. and Ashburton. So um, you touched on it, Jimmy. Like last season, their star actually wasn't as good as this season, but they don't look as strong as they did last season, Jim. Yeah, they don't early on. I think it's it's hard to come from one season to another and and, oh, yeah. and really hit the ground running. So they they uh, experienced that buzz of winning the league the way they did and the Foz Cup as well. And then, you know, a week a week off, presentation night, and you're back into round one. Got to do it all again, you know. It's difficult. So, uh, Moreland probably just need this time. I think they're, some teams need I think a break. This, this some breaks teams don't. good for them. Yeah. Uh, um, you'd know as well. You know, when, you're, when you finish the season on top of the ladder, it doesn't stop because you're more than likely you're in the club's cup, um, at least the semis, yeah. um, if not grand finals, the first cup finals. And you, like you said, you get that one week off and then you're back in it. Whereas if, you know... You're a team that doesn't really get through the first rounds of the cups and whatnot. You have a, a longer break, so I think you're right. You know, the, they come back, a bit, um, they have premiership hangovers and yeah. still fatigue. You know, from playing so many games because the back in the season, so many games to play as well. And at the same time, Moreland don't have as deep of a squad as uh, maybe some of the other top teams. You mm. know, they have their kind of core seven, eight core players, and that's it. There's not much else. No youth coming through, mm-hmm. so they really rely on those guys to be fit and play a lot of minutes and and, uh, and then a lot of them played through injury last season as well so maybe that's something to look at um, the transfer window is still open maybe a, f- a bit more depth oh, to play don't, don't tempt him don't tempt and whatnot. him um, uh, that we always like a bit of a transfer a- any rumours Costa have you heard anything oh nothing 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 I can say really but um the He's going heard ba- <laughs> going back into Moreland um, they 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 did start off a bit slowly We it seems like um you know, we talk about it being a hangover, but they were missing Cosimo Russo and Ate Definitely. Ibrahim in the yeah. opening round. And they were the two players that really stepped up in the second round to beat Wolves, who were really giving it to him in the first half. Um, Ate stepped up with a mm-hmm. ridiculous hat trick. Um, you can see you can see the goals on the Instagram page. They they were just he he. You saw him. And you'll see the goals on the highlights. Oh yeah, you'll actually. see it. Yeah. Um, but. Ate, you know, he was having his little, his, his beef, his little arguments with, I think, Alison it was, or so it was someone, Laz, some, Laz, yeah, Laz, yeah, they were, they were get going face to face, and Ate, he said, you know what, you know, I'm not going to say anything, I'll just let the goals do the talking, he's, and he's then just he came a competitor, and had you. isn't he, Ate, yeah. Ibrahim, he's a, a absolute, um, you know, he's pretty quiet, actually, on the court, doesn't say much, he'll, he'll just get on about his business and score the goals, as you said, um, and... I was going to lead somewhere with this, but uh, I've actually forgotten what was on top of my head. But, oh, yeah, I was going to move on to, um, <laughs> we touched on it uh, pre-show, but um, 
Alison Limo and Cosimo Russo. I'm not sure, maybe even um, Pepe with the exuberant yep. celebrations. I thought I thought they were lucky to get away with uh, no yellow cards, all three of them. Um, mm. Jimmy obviously disagrees. I disagree as well, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'll have that on your screen as well. <laughs> but um, I, I love the antics. I loved. I, I love the theatrical side of it as well. There's obviously. A, a bit of a, a, a strong rivalry, not a bit, a strong rivalry there. And yeah. I, I look forward, uh, um, we did see some comments earlier on, but um, the Wolves did win the title for more than last season and different sort of Wolves side. But um, yeah, there's a bit of bit of sweetness there, isn't there? Oh, of course. Of um, course. Moving on, um, there's a, my, mo my mob, second on the ladder. Um, two wins, uh, Cam Field 5-1 uh, and Pascal 10-5. Um, I'll let you guys review because... You don't want to review it? I don't want to blow my own <laughs> horn, actually. Yeah, better not. Look, it's been pretty convincing in my eyes. I think uh, not just the results, I think the way that you guys have come out this season, I think the intensity you've shown, the depth on the bench, you've built a good squad and it's shown early. Uh, you know, the pressure is reminiscent of uh, your title winning days. So I think uh, you've taken a good approach to building a, a team. You know, you went what, fifth a couple of seasons in a row and mm -hmm. um, spent some time developing some young players and uh, and strengthening the team in good areas. So it's it's looked positive the opening two rounds. I think probably a terrible time for a break with the momentum you guys have. Yeah, so definitely. We're not, not, not too keen on the yeah, break. Yeah, so yet. for some teams it works well, for some it doesn't. But I'm mm -hmm. sure um, you'll hit the ground running and, and be up there at yeah. the end of the season. That's, I, I, that's I think eyes. that um, Pascal game was a combination of us really up for it and Pascal really yeah. not ready for it. Um, hence why we uh, we were able to run over him such. Yep. But uh, obviously uh, we have the King of Leagues here, um, Costa. You announced early on um, uh, <coughs> the signing of Lockman Ramadan. Um, <laughs> two games. How have you seen his performance? Um, I think the second game was better than the first, mm -hmm. I believe. I saw, I think that was the, the assist he did give to Tom. In to the Tom. first he gave the was assist. Was that the first? Yeah, in the second game he scored. Tom gave him the assist. Oh, so. okay. So maybe there's a partnership coming up there with Tom uh, absolutely killing it as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Lockie Ramadan, he looks like he's he's fit, he's fitting in slowly. Um, he's he's got his the way he presses, you know. He's he's fitting in that Carlton press. Yeah, for sure. They're just that high intensity, you know. He's on and off, um, on and off the court. He, he he does little spurts on the court. He'll come off, sub back on, and but his impact is is there definitely. You've added to the depth. Um, you're already a squad with such ridiculous depth um so many youth players you'd probably have the most uh the, the biggest youth team in the in the youth leagues i reckon the most players on the bench uh do we I'm yeah not sure. there you go Z zaki does a good job there the barista i'd, I'd brother. say so yeah you got you got um, players like our old richmond boy alec coming up yeah that was a, a shout out that was a good pickup actually alec but um i think in general <laughs> would have seen um i got the sack from the youth team um five games into last season and zach took over and so look what happened really. yeah i know so good job zaki um but I think also we recruited well mid-season last season where we picked up uh, Tom and Harry, yeah. um, two young boys as well. Tom's just um, overage now for the youth, but Harry's still 16 um, from Fitzroy. And I think I uh, credit Fitzroy. They've done a great job with him. And um, I think we're pretty happy to have him. And moving on to Fitzroy, top of the ladder. Are you happy to have him? Are you happy to have him? What? Are you happy Am that they, I have happy him? they have him? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, look, you can't have all the young superstars. You had That's Adam, now you got Elias. You can't. He's got it Sinan. was kind of a trade, wasn't it? Sinan for yeah. Harry, indirectly. Yeah, th there you go. Indirectly. They you got there in the end, didn't you? You can't, you can't really pick pick who's better for me. I, c I couldn't tell you. Um, if you want to debate it, I, I don't mind uh, sitting out. Well, we had this argument, I think, a couple uh, nat junior nationals ago where everyone picked Elias as... Um, as MVP and also adamant I think it was under 14s national it was the 14s final and yeah. I was adamant that it was Harry um, but because Harry plays such a especially then played such a dedicated target role mm -hmm. um, especially in the finals he was always that outlet pass and like credit to Elias who was always actually able to find that pass follow up score his goals but it was for me it was a hard pick I picked Harry everyone else picked Elias so I'm not sure if that is a bit, bit of a <laughs> uh, uh, favoritism with, with the chief here but um uh, for sure, um, you know, it's always been probably Elias 1, 2, and then uh, Adam came in Oh yeah. Um, uh, a little bit later into the picture. Um, Buddy Tabbitt, who's back, but he's been off and on as well. So Fitzroy uh, definitely have the class of um, all the class for the youth players. So anyone out there, if you want to recruit, that's where you're <laughs> going, man. Um, you won't like me saying that. 
But uh, yes, so on Fitzroy, the top of the ladder. We touched on their youth. Uh, their senior team's pretty much a youth team. Yeah. Um, I'm unbelievable, really, um, what they've been able to do the last few seasons. We'll stay focused on the last couple of games, though. But easy fixture um, so far, um, Ashburton and Altona. But you can only play what's in front of you. And you've only considered three goals, scored 16, Jimmy. So you guys must be pleased with the way you're, you're going. Yeah, we came into the season really uh, motivated to do better than last season. You know, mm-hmm. finishing third was good for us as we were in the relegation zone sort of halfway through. But, uh, yeah, uh, we, we really came in motivated to do well this season. And, yeah, you mentioned we probably played two of the sides that will be down the bottom of the table. But Look, uh, we, can, we can say that, but Altona did really uh, make it tough in the first it wasn't, game. It wasn't yeah. easy, yeah. But the first half of that first game, Altona, would, I think they finished the game, uh, finished the half, Oh no, they would have been down, they but down they equalised as yeah. soon as that second half started. Latini hit his, his hit his double, and they equalised early. So it was it was still a tough game for you. And yeah, that, yeah, that was and a tough game. Altona sure. round one beat Fitzroy last season as well, so um, could be a bit of a like a, it's almost like Altona's always pumped to play you round one. Yeah, possibly. I don't know, but um, yeah, we've started well, so that's uh, that's positive. We got um, the same core team. Added Michael Newen to the team as well. Good signing. Um, yeah, great. Yeah. Gab Lucena, Tal Galp is still pushing to, to get it back in the side. So, uh, yeah, we're yeah. happy with the team. And, and the young boys are really stepping up. Well, personally, for me, Elias, Parthamos and, and Sinan Gluhak are playing incredibly well. Mm-hmm. 16-year-olds, they're starting games and scoring goals, creating play, you know, mm-hmm. defending well. Something Sinan really yeah, I struggled with uh, when he first came. So, uh, yeah, personally, what did Carlton for, for me... Do to him? <laughs> <laughs> we tried, we tried. <laughs> but personally, yeah, look, for me, Sinan's playing a, a great role and, and one I thought he wouldn't reach so quickly. So um, for these kids, it's it's quality to see and, and so much uh, time and effort spent on um, on some of them. It's it's really rewarding. And that's always actually been um, the, uh, the most impressive thing about Fitzroy is that no matter who's come to the club, um, their system, they've been always been able to teach them well enough to play a role. It, um, mm-hmm. And the, exa- the best example I can give is maybe like Tal Galpa, who um, coming in initially, probably uh, no one really uh, thought much of. But man, whenever he's out there, he plays the exact role he needs for Fitzroy, and he and he really um, performs a well enough role to give the selectors a headache week in yep. week out. Uh, I'd say he'd be a good pickup for Carlton. Tell, I think maybe last season would have been. Um, well, he's, he's struggling stage. to get into the squad at this point. There's so much depth at Fitzroy. Yeah, uh, I think that's the case with us as well. I think uh, um, the top two at the moment probably have the most depth. Um, uh, where where we got headaches every week, you know. Have it, now Lockie's come in as well. Gustus is finally pl- back to his probably his best. Tom's playing outstanding for for mm-hmm. Lockie. So yeah, it's it's tricky. Um, depth is always a it's a gift and also a curse because it can cause dramas as well. We'll um we'll go to a short ad break um, while we catch our breath and we'll be back after this. <laughs> Do you have a team of stars in the waiting? Get them off the sidelines and create a junior team today. Played on Friday evenings and Saturdays, futsal offers kids lots of touches on the ball with non-stop action. And you only need five players to get your own team started. Enter a junior team today and take your kids to grand final glory. For more information, visit futsalaws.com.au. Welcome back. We are um, going to talk about our team of the week um, just for round two. Uh, decided, uh, I won't say who was decided by, it's pretty much an open conversation week in, week out anyway. Um, we'll talk about, for, we'll start from the goalkeeper, um, Mazen Abdallah, um, who uh, I think has had a great um, start to his Carlton career, really. Well, he's... he's the only player in the opening two rounds to be in the starting team of the week lineup, mm-hmm. so I think that uh, shows enough. Th- but this week, I believe, I believe he made it because not enough keepers stepped up really mm-hmm. and had that, those man of the match performances. But Marzen did do good, did did you know do the job to stand out amongst them. But there wasn't for me a really standout goalkeeper that yeah. that really fair enough destroyed the game. Uh, as yeah. usually, there is one or two that can that just you know, are outstanding with the goalkeepers we have in this league. Um, and uh, he did cop that cake, obviously, <laughs> towards he made the up end for the it. legs, and he scored later on. Um, 
We'll transition now. Ata Ibrahim. Ata Ibrahim, uh, he's got goal of the week now, so we'll get that up for you right now. Um, it was an amazing goal. As we have a look here, he um, nutmegs one player, rounds the other, and buries Carl Dadic. And it was a very impressive goal. Uh, Jimmy Sufus came at a very crucial moment. It did, really. That game, uh, Ata Ibrahim put the team on his back and brought him back into the game. Pretty sure he scored a hat trick to bring him back to three all. Uh, yeah, they so were from from three one down. Yeah, three in a row he got. Yeah. yeah from so Arte Ibrahim's earned that goal of the week. Was and it three nil or was it two one? When he scored, like was it two one or did it go to three? I believe I believe it was two one and then it went to three one and then it went to three all. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I that's, that's right. what yeah, I recall. Yeah, yeah. That's so. right. So Arte scored all those goals, including the wonder goal you just saw on your screen. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easy pick in team of the week. Uh, I don't think the guy picking it could have got it wrong. Absolutely. Whoever it was, it was a great pick. Really. Um, and on the uh, left flank, Enrique Pimenta, I think easy pick, six goals. We gave him player of the round. Player of the round as well. There you go. They will get that up on your uh, big screen. Um, he's got plenty, plenty of um, talent, skill. Um, his uh, defensive work sometimes needs um, a bit more. A bit more effort, maybe. Yeah, but w in a game like that where it was wide open, he can really cut you up, can't yeah, he? Yeah, look, speaking to uh, one of his old coaches, I won't name names, um, but <laughs> he did say that Enrique was uh, a top-quality player to have against the weaker teams and uh, maybe not so good against the top teams. So a bit of a dagger there for you, Enrique. Maybe you can <laughs> prove him wrong this season. But uh, obviously, like we said, six goals is just um, uh, an excellent effort in I from anyone. Um, I haven't seen that in the yeah. in the series futsal for Saint Andreas oh, yeah. Govas, I think, against Carlton. Um, <laughs> What's it? Six goals. Six yeah. goals. Yeah. I think Cosby scored eight last game. Yeah, probably in one game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Against who? Probably North up. Melbourne. <laughs> I was talking Cops <laughs> Cup. Um, talking about youth too, we saw we'll about 40 to 1. I think, from I think we might need to switch these two players around, but Tom Natalie, you've got on the right flank. Uh, team of the week twice in a row, I think, last week on the bench. Yep. Um, good start as well. One of the youth players, as we touched on mm -hmm. um, early on, who's had a good start to his season, um, scored four goals um, already in two games. So... Um, in, in three, I think it is. Three th goals. Three goals, sorry. Um, in a um, strong Carlton side where he probably doesn't get as many minutes as the rest of the as you know, uh, myself, Arturo and um, Zach. But obviously coming on and doing a great job when he does do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and up target is Danny Shabani. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen him go, Jimmy, so far this season? Well, he just played the one game. Yeah. Uh, missing round one. Same with Enrico, really, yeah. Same as Enrico, so big, yeah. Big so misses for Camperfield round yeah, one. Clearly they goes to show you they back. came back in and, and straight into the team of the week. So, um, a top quality performance from Camberfield all round. Uh, nothing really went wrong for them, to be honest. So, yeah, good to see them back. And uh, they're very important players for the side. They, they'd be really happy because against Carlton, was it 5-1? Mm -hmm. Only one goal they could find. And they get Enrique and Danny, they 13, come in yeah. and they... How Dang. many goals did they get accumulative? I think it was eight or nine. Danny, I think, got two. And he got three assists himself. I don't think Enrique got any assists. He, he can might ma maybe one, claim. Maybe. Yeah, but, Plus you know, or, or none, that maybe. firepower they missed against Carlton, they really proved, they really proved quickly, their worth. Shabs, just I know we're on uh, the team of the week right yeah. now, but on Camberfield, one thing I forgot to mention, how do you think Enzo's fitted uh, into the side? Yeah, just we've really forgotten about him, haven't we? So he, that's a big look, sign. What was it? A 13-1 win. He had one goal, no assists. Mm -hmm. From an attacking player, I think... It's probably not enough. Look, mm -hmm. um, look. I know that in the first minute of the game against us, he burnt me, left me for dead, and mm -hmm. I said, "I thought, are you take him for now until I get get, get warmed up, um, yeah. compose yourself." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. So, um, and he did have a couple, but he's very much a impact player. Yeah. He, uh, if you're relying on him to play long periods of the game, uh, I think you're going to. Uh, you're not going to get the best out of him. I think um, when he comes on and, you know, the players are a little bit fatigued and he comes on with his pace, um, his, his uh, just pure ball control and, and skill, his shot is phenomenal. He can really do damage. But, um, you know, in terms of how the game's played, I'm not sure he's So maybe you're saying that similar impact. to a uh, Jose Pepe Filio. He was playing a lot of minutes Could at be. Moreland and maybe not having the same output. Could be, so yeah. Much. So that, that's that's how I've seen him. But you know, he he was a class player. I think they won a title. He won a title of Pascal yep. when he was here. So obviously he no, he's played enough 
of the game to understand it, but just hasn't really got that. I feel like he's that sort of impact player. Well, yeah. I, I haven't seen many shots from him. He hasn't really been really testing the keepers that much, yeah. in my opinion. He, maybe he's struggling for space. He, need, he needs a few more games to get yeah. used to the... And it will take angles. time for Camberfield to work out what's the best way for him to play. And um, last but not least, our, our manager of the week, Ernie ES5, in his first um, managerial role for the heart... Um, covering Evan Roberta. So we've gone the two managers this season with Harry and Evan te- teaming up. and Ernie and Evan. Sorry. <laughs> Ernie and Evan teaming up. And Ernie's got himself on the scoreboard with an impressive performance against Pascal Vale. It's Harry and Evan in the... Uh, Harry yeah, and Ernie in the yeah, photo. That's though, right. Yeah. That's right. That's what's <laughs> thrown me off. Any reason for Ernie uh, taking a step back from the playing team? Oh, a hard question. Look, oh, oh, yeah, we had a discussion. Um, he's <laughs> been playing a very long time. Um, and... He felt like that um, his commitment wasn't as strong as ours at this um, present time, which happens. You know, you've seen it happen to Joel de Silva as well, who took that season off, came b- back really strong. So I'm not sure if Ernie's in that boot, if he's hung, uh, boat, if he's hung up the boots permanently. Um, but he's decided this season to, to take a break at, at the very least. Um, whether he changes his mind or not, I don't know. Um, you know, we saw towards the end end of last season his game time was um, more limited but it, um, we used him in that more impact role like I was saying with um, Enzo um, and you know what I, I, it was an unselfish decision you know I think he felt like our trainings were um, he was holding us back a little bit at trainings because he, he, he we all know and he likes to clown around a bit and mm-hmm. uh, we were trying to step it up and I, look it's hard it's very hard for anyone to retire um, so I don't want to say he's retired yet, but he's definitely made an unselfish decision to take a step back and really help us from behind the scenes, which is great. Yep, fair enough. Um, we'll, uh, that's the team of the week done and dusted. Uh, moving um, on, um, obviously we did uh, start off with, you know, we know Futsal Laws is shut down at the moment. Um, yep. There's no serious Futsal, no social league. It's tragic. It is tragic, isn't it, boys? Um, I don't know what to do with my life. I, ne- I need to run. I can't run without a ball at my feet, so I'm just going to get fat. Really. I mean, Jimmy Sufus hasn't had a day off from Futsal Laws since he's 16, really. He's yeah. clearly, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> um, he, d- he won't stop messaging me. Um, do we, Jimmy, do we know what we're going to do, how we're going to resume the leagues, um, in s- serious Futsal specifically? Um, do we have an idea what's going to happen? Are we going to shorter season or what's happening? I, I think it all depends on how long we're off for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if it ends up being the two weeks that we've initially sort of closed for, we may uh, we may be able to get uh, catch up games in and and stuff like that. Even four weeks is is okay. Uh, but if it stretches any any more past that, I think maybe you got to look at maybe a fourteen game season and and going going like that, uh, similar to the AFL. Yeah, uh, but. I think it all just depends. If we come back in two weeks, it's not a big deal. We missed two or three games, and we can easily catch them up um, for for all the leagues, all the elite leagues. And it just really depends. I think yeah. everyone's kind of in the dark at the moment, That's right. sort of knowing how it's going to pan out. Uh, yeah. So it's a difficult situation as as an organisation and as a league to to run. So yeah. I'm not sure how how it will all pan out in the end. I think the final decision will come down to um, the commissioners and the chief commissioner. So. Um, yeah, we and can I'll give suggestions, but I don't think uh, it is, it's a final decision yeah. from us. So. And obviously, you know, we've seen around the world um, leagues um, really struggling, um, clubs really struggling to stay alive. Mm-hmm. Um, no doubt, serious futsal <coughs> will get through this. Futsal laws will get through this unscathed. You know, we're well placed. We have the right people to make sure that um, whatever happens will come out on the other side. Um, uh, Flailing, you know. Yeah, I think personally, is with that the, the right word, flailing. I don't, I don't think that's a word. I, I think flailing. that's the right thing to say. But flailing. Yeah. flailing. We'll, um, we'll guns that. blazing. Maybe yeah. we can put a definition on the screen. Yeah, I, I know. hope there's a definition. Yeah. <laughs> I think personally, look, the, Leave that for the, the measures group. that uh, Australia's taken with the COVID nineteen virus, uh, it's not a massive issue here right now. So mm-hmm. I think at the moment, it's all prevention. So hopefully. It is all prevented and now. That, that's and what they said in Italy, though, three weeks ago. You know, I, I, I personally thought they should have shut the borders down two, three weeks ago. Yeah. But anyway, we're, we're not anyway, that serious. It's been done now, so hopefully the, it takes us two weeks now of everyone sort of being away from the games and uh, everyone can come back and it doesn't take too long as it has in uh, other places. But well, obviously, yeah. look, China took six weeks to, to return to normal mm. business. So yeah. uh, it's been already a couple of weeks, I think. It shouldn't uh, last too long, yeah. but you know we're not health experts, and 
That's right. Uh, part of the government, so yeah. we, we can't really know. It's just so we really we should movies. be 1.5 meters away at the yeah. moment. Well, yeah. that, there's a conversation <laughs> to be made. Guy. There's a conversation to be made with AFL and A League. I think they're both sta- um, staying yeah. up. And they, the NRL, I think. They're, 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 we see the interviews. They're 1.5 meters away mm. from each other, I believe. But then they tackle each other on the field. Yeah, and I don't really doesn't really um, but, uh, yeah. add up to me, but. You know, and I think, like, um, I know we're moving on to another sport now, but the uh, they've been critical of the AFL continuing, but in reality, the only reason why the GP was cancelled, the um, NBA was cancelled, was because there was players confirmed yeah. to have it. Um, knock on wood, we haven't had any such cases at Futsal Laws, at, um, at Serious Futsal, uh, sorry, at um, AFL level or even in the A-League. Um, and you know that begs the question: Why couldn't serious futsal just continue um, in the same yeah. manner? I uh, think it's been spoken that possibly in, mm. in two weeks, maybe serious futsal will return mm-hmm. um, on its own. But well, you'd hate to keep seeing these sports in Australia keep pushing forward while we're you know sitting yeah. watching them go. Yeah, really. Right. Yeah. Um, I think personally, it's a good decision from the AFL. I think mm. while they don't have to completely shut down and they just got to take uh, extra precautions, I think mm-hmm. it's good that they continue to play oh, for sure and the A League and the NRL. So. Mm-hmm. Um, look, I think at the end of the day, it's just um, judgment from people that stops uh, other sports going. You know, I think even the Premier League may have continued to go on its own and not the, the lower divisions. Yeah. But I think uh, people's judgment and, and uh, online uh, bombardment and yeah. trolling is mm-hmm. just sometimes too much for, for yeah. the organisations yeah. to deal with. So it's better to just close the doors and uh, and let them breathe and come back. Uh, it's a shame fresh, because, you know, you know at, at first we were saying, oh, we should close, we should close. But when we did close the doors, we had a lot more response in terms of, oh, no, what are we going to do? We want you to stay open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All that I sort of personally stuff. Personally, that's the thing. It's not when people uh, do uh, write letters of concern to close the doors and and uh, and stop stop this spreading. Yeah. I think they don't realize that everyone doesn't so much want the yeah. want it to stop, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so and there wasn't really any reason for it to completely stop. Maybe the social leagues had to be had to yeah. be postponed in the juniors, but I think for the elite leagues to play here in front of no one and to usher people out after their games, yep. that doesn't really um, reach the 100 limit that it, uh, the government is imp- putting in place the now. Sometimes minor- the minority has the l- loudest voice. Exactly there. right. Mm-hmm. So I think it's unfair for, for people who do want to play, and I know a lot of players, especially serious football players, uh, do want to come and play. Or even just for us to open the stadium so mm. they can come have a kick, you know. So, right. uh, yeah, it's it's a, a split d- debate. But for me, I don't think it's fair that uh, the minority has uh, outlasted the majority. Spe- speaking so. of debates, there's an interesting one going around. If the season was to be cut short right now and done and dusted, should Fitzroy be hand- handled? Absolutely. <laughs> well, on top the of the ladder, the most goals, most wins. You can look decision. at opponents though. Carlton have been the team to defeat should, the should, harder sh- opponents. Should there be a waiting you system? You can't be the judge of that after two games. What would that ha- ha- how many titles would that team. give you, Jimmy? I think five. They'll make it five. So, look, oh, I think... And then maybe I'll bring out a new virus next season. <laughs> after the first game. We'll go <laughs> conspiracies. Six, don't, like let d- don't let Demon yeah. hear that. He loves yeah. his conspiracies. Actually, uh, this, this is one for you. So, Peter Parthamos, the chief engineer this coronavirus, just to <laughs> give Fitzroy the, le- uh, the, 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 the league this Fitzroy season. Fitzroy Oz. Um, Fitzroy Oz, it, it is indeed hashtag Asia Attic. Um, <laughs> she uh, didn't even create that; just spread it. Yeah, I know. Um, but um, in all seriousness, um, you know, like you said, Jimmy, it could depend on how long the the closure is for. It might be just a, um, a write off this season if it does last for that long. I don't think it will, but yeah. I highly doubt it. Don't think so. So, a- as a, a player, what would you prefer? Would you prefer to see the season continue from where it's at? When we come back, whenever it may be, or eating and then eating to next season, or would you rather this season be uh, scrapped and we start again? As a, as a player, that's games. equal first. Um, look, if we're, it depends how long it goes for. Like if, like I, like you said, if it's two, two to four weeks, you're sort of like, yeah, happy to continue, can have the catch up games. But if you start going, you know, two, three months break. Some people are talking six months, which yeah. I think is unfathomable. But mm. if it does happen. Um, you sort of just say, oh, do we start we start right the season off and start from scratch, you know, as much as it, s- it sucks for us because and probably you guys have had two wins from two wins and you want to be rewarded for a good start. Um, I, I can't see any reason why you'd want to, uh, otherwise you end up delaying next season. So they're your two options, you know, you've got to miss a season somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure how that would work. That's something to be discussed. Um, yeah. Yep. 
Um, I think that's it from us, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Do you guys have anything you want to add before we run away? I think that's no, it. That's it. Really um, we'll try and have these th these podcasts regularly um, through the break. Um, keep you updated on what's going on. Do some reviews, maybe some segments. I know Jimmy Sufus has his um, his own um, segments coming up where he likes to stir the pot a bit. Um, and the kennel's coming up. Um, stay tuned for the Mad Dogs kennel. Um, but that's all from us. Thank you very much for joining us and be safe. Um, and hopefully we'll see you on the court very soon.